Hey everyone, it's John, and today we've got some pretty exciting news, and that is that Nornir 3 has finally been released. So what I figured I would do in this video is go through some of the crucial changes to help you get up and running. Now just to be clear, this is certainly not a deep dive on the new features available, I'm simply going to help you translate your old Nornir scripts into working within Nornir 3. So if we do an ls, you can see that I've got a basic setup for a Nornir configuration, I've got my host file, my groups file as well as my config file. Now you'll also notice this run1.py, effectively what we're going to do is translate this old Nornir play playbook, <laughs> this old Nornir runbook into a Nornir 3 compatible runbook. So first things first, let's get to installing Nornir 3. So we just simply say pip3 install Nornir. So you might be thinking, wow that was a really quick installation and the reality is you would be right. The fact is, is that in Nornir 3, Nornir Core has actually been decoupled from the plugins, so when you install Nornir, you're just getting the core. If you want the plugins such as Napalm and NetMiko and all of its utilities such as Print Result and LoadJam and so on and so forth, you are going to have to implement them or rather install them separately. So the question remains, how do we actually get these plugins? Well, if we go to the Nornir website, we're going to find out that information, so let's visit that. So if I go to Nornir.tech, and what I'm going to do is click on the projects and then Nornir. And what we're looking for is the plugin, so let's click that. Okay, so just be aware that this has been denoted as a work in progress, i.e. there might be more plugins forthcoming. But if you want to get the functionality of, say for example, Napalm, well what you're going to do is a pip3 install Nornir Napalm. This allows you to interact with the Napalm library. Similarly, if you want NetMiko, you're going to have to separately do a pip3 install Nornir underscore NetMiko. And this is true for Nornir Netbox, Nornir Ansible, Nornir Scraply. And here's an important one, Nornir Utils. This is where you're going to find all your common functions such as the print result function and the print title function. If you install print utils, all of these will be included. And last but not least, we've also got the good old Nornir Ginger 2, so we also want to install that. So how about we just go and install all of these plugins and see how we go. Okay, so we'll do a pip3 install Nornir Napalm. Next what we'll do is pip3 install Nornir NetMiko. Then we'll do a pip3 install Nornir Scraply. And let's get the very important Nornir Utils. And for now I'll just get Ginger 2 as well. So now that we've installed these plugins, let's look at that runbook then. So we do a vim run1.py. Okay, now the main thing that's going to change is this part here, all of our import paths, because effectively we're getting them from different sources now. One that won't change is this one here, from Nornir import init Nornir, that is still part of Nornir core, nothing about that changes at all. But say for example, load YAML or template file or print result, so this path here, Nornir plugins task data, this is no longer valid, we have to actually correct that, so how on earth do we get the right information then? Well the reality is you can get this information directly from the GitHub, so let's go there. So if we go down to Nornir Utils and click this link, this is going to take us to the Nornir Utils repository. So what we want to go into is this folder here, Nornir underscore Utils. So let's click that, and what we want are plugins. So say for example we want to get a task, let's go in here, and we go into data, you can actually see this is where the code for the load underscore yaml.py resides. So how do we actually import this within our script? Well, we just simply follow the path up here. That's all we're doing. We're effectively saying, look in the Nornir util folder, the plugins folder, the task folder, and then the data folder, import load yaml. Okay, so let's amend this then. I'm going to delete all this. And what we're going to say is from Nornir utils as per the path, dot, we want to go into the plugins folder, and then the tasks folder, and then the data folder, and then we're going to import load YAML, and that's all we need to do. So let's do the same for template underscore file then. Now the template underscore file task is held within Nornir underscore Ginger 2, so let's click on that repository. And again, we click on Nornir underscore Ginger 2. What we're going to do is click on the plugins folder, then the task folder, and there we have the code for template underscore file. So what is the import path going to be then? Well, we're going to say it from Nornir underscore Ginger 2 dot plugins dot tasks import template underscore file. So let's delete all this again. And we're going to say from Nornir underscore Ginger 2 dot plugins dot tasks and then we import template file. 
Let's now do the same for print results. Now, print result can be found within Nornier Utils as it specifies here. So let's go into that repository. And again, we click on Nornier Utils. Go into the plugins folder and then into the functions folder. And there we have the code for print underscore result. And then what we're going to say is from Nornier underscore Utils dot plugins dot functions. And we're going to import the code for print results. And lastly, let's get the import path for good old NetMiko. So Nornier NetMiko has its own repository now. Let's click on that and um, we'll click on the Nornier NetMiko folder. What we're going to do is click on the tasks folder. And there we can see we've got the code here for NetMiko send command as well as NetMiko send config. And what we're going to say is from Nornier underscore NetMiko dot tasks and we're going to import NetMiko send config and NetMiko send command. Okay, so at first glance, this seems like everything is great, but let's try running the code. We'll do python3 run1.py and we have an unexpected keyword argument num worker. So why is this failing? Well, the reality is, is that there also has been changes made to the config.yaml file. So let's quickly see how our file looks just now. We do a vim config.yaml. So here is where our failure is. We've got an unexpected keyword argument, i.e. num workers under core. What we're going to have to do is amend this. And another thing we're going to also have to amend is this plugin here. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the plugins because in Nornier 3, you have the concept of registering plugins. The good news, however, is that you don't actually have to register the simple inventory. That said, this path no longer works. In fact, it's been greatly simplified. Instead, the plugin is now just called simple inventory. So let's first change that then and we get rid of all this stuff here. And to get this to work, what I'm going to have to do is delete this stuff here, okay? Now, another concept which is new in Nornier 3, which I'm not going to dig into in this video, is the concept of a runner. Now, previously what you saw is that you would specify the num workers to determine how many concurrent connections Nornier would spin up. So if you set that to one, effectively we would have no multi-threading. Nornia would just act sequentially, but if we hard coded it to say 50, we could spin up 50 threads. With the concept of runners, we now have a bit more granular control. You can kind of do it ad hoc by specifying a serial runner or a threaded runner. So in effect, what I'm going to do is use the key called runners. And within that, I'm going to say plugin. Now I can choose a threaded runner or a serial runner. What I want to have is the concurrent connection. So I want to say threaded. After that, we're going to give the options key. Now this is where we specify our num workers now. So we do it num underscore workers and let's just keep it as it was before and set it to 10. Okay, so fingers crossed. Hopefully we've got things working. Let's try it out and see how we go. So the python3 run 1.py and there we have it. We've now converted our old Nornier script to be able to work within Nornier 3. And the main things we had to do was install the different plugins individually change our import path as well as make an amendment to our configuration file. So that's everything for today. What I wanted to do was to highlight some of the key changes within Nornier 3 because I have been getting a lot of people reach out to me on LinkedIn asking me how they can convert their old Nornier scripts to work in Nornier 3 because they were simply starting to fail. But a big shout out to the Nornier team because they've actually made the transition really quite seamless. It's pretty minimal to get your old scripts working. You don't need to change any of the main parts of the code. In essence, you're just changing your import paths. So if you're interested in being able to write the kind of code that you just saw deployed there, then feel free to check out my new training available on CBT Nuggets and I'll leave the link in the description. And the last thing I would add is that if you find the Nornier project useful, then really consider supporting them because the reality is they're only a small team and they're maintaining a really large and valuable project for us. So what I'm also going to do is leave the link for the creator of Nornier, David Barroso's GitHub, within the description and just consider supporting them to keep the work going. And you can do that by pledging a very small monthly sponsorship. So that's everything. So enjoy Nornier 3, so keep labbing, keep automating, and I'll see you soon.